Welcome back to the NDS video blog series. Today, in this video, we'll be discussing cutoff levels. At NDS, we get a lot of phone calls and emails asking about cutoff levels in general, and also for specific substances and tests. Since cutoff levels can vary from test to test, it can sometimes get misunderstood. So let's start with the basics, and then we'll dive into some specifics. In drug testing, a cutoff level is established to determine when a test will be positive for illegal drugs. The lab analysis measures the amount of the drug metabolite in the specimen at the time of testing. Using the established cutoff level means that a small trace of the metabolite is permitted to be present in a specimen and the test results still be reported as negative. Every benefit of the doubt is given to the donor. In marijuana testing, for example, the cutoff levels have been chosen in order to prevent false positives based on secondhand smoke or other factors. For opiate testing, the cutoff levels prevent false positives based on consumption of poppy seeds. Cutoff levels are used to determine whether to immediately report a negative drug test result after an initial screening or to send the specimen on to the laboratory for further confirmation testing. A higher cutoff level in the screening process may cast a wider net to find the drug class being tested. The confirmation test is then used as the definitive testing process to determine a positive result. A screening result commonly indicates that a class of drugs is positive, not necessarily which specific drug triggered the positive result. Confirmation testing is necessary because a false positive can occur when the screening phase is positive, but the drug is not actually present. A false negative can occur when the drug is actually present, but the screening result is negative. In order to determine if a urine specimen is negative or positive for drugs of abuse, all specimens go through a screening procedure, and then if initial results are above the screening cutoff levels, that specimen is then flagged for confirmation testing. The second round of testing, called confirmation testing, uses gas chromatography, gas chromatography mass spectrometry, or liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, mass spectrometry. The subsequent confirmatory procedures are performed on a second independent portion of the original urine specimen. Specimens that test above the confirmation cutoff levels are reported by the lab as positive. And at this point, you may be thinking, so who determines the cutoff levels for drug testing? And that's a great question. So let's touch on that for just a moment. The cutoff levels for federal workplace testing and Department of Transportation or DOT testing are established by the United States Department of Health and Human Services, referred to as HHS, and they establish the mandatory guidelines for federal workplace drug testing program and these guidelines are published by the HHS agency called the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, commonly referred to as SAMHSA. SAMHSA also provides recommended cutoff levels for non-DOT testing. Now, let's dive into cutoff levels. But before we do, let's take a quick second to explain the acronyms that you're gonna be seeing on your screen. The method used for the initial screening phase is called enzyme aminoassay, referred to as EIA. The method used during the confirmation phase, as mentioned just a moment ago, is called gas chromatography mass spectrometry, referred to as GCMS. And the cutoff levels are measured in nanograms and milliliters, referred to as NGML. So now that we've explained those specifics, let's get into some actual cutoff levels of various substances. The drug testing cutoff levels for the standard five panel urine test are as follows. Amphetamines, to include amphetamine and methamphetamine. The screen cutoff level is 1000. The confirmation level is 500. The cocaine metabolite. The screening cutoff level is 300. And the confirmation level is 150. 
marijuana metabolites. The screening cutoff level is 50 and the confirmation level is 15. Opiates to include codeine and morphine. The screening cutoff level is 2000 and the confirmation cutoff level is also 2000. Opioids. These are expanded opiates. The screening cutoff level is 300. The confirmation level is also 300. Fencyclidine or PCP. The screening cutoff level is 25 and the confirmation cutoff level is also 25. Now, many non-regulated employers mirror the cutoff levels established by the government while others customize their drug testing panels to be more sensitive to certain drugs based upon their own workplace program needs and the unique workforce that they employ. Drug testing has two cutoff levels or phases for positive detection, screening and confirmation. Labs that follow the guidelines will consider drug testing to be negative if detection is below the cutoff level for either phase of testing. In the case of urine analysis, drug testing cutoff levels are measured in nanograms per milliliter. Screening and confirmation testing are performed using different testing methodologies that have different specificity and sensitivity. The screening and confirmation testing may have different cutoff levels. When the lab performs the screening testing, if the specimen tests below the cutoff level during screening, the lab reports the test result as negative. Now confirmation testing or gas chromatography mass spectrometry identifies the exact drug metabolite at a specific quantitative level. Confirmation testing can also be performed with liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. These confirmation techniques eliminate false positives or false negatives. A medical review officer or an MRO is used for further quality control and also to rule out positives based on legitimately prescribed drugs. Now for non-regulated testing, cutoff levels may differ among the various drug testing laboratories. But for DOT testing, the levels will always be the same among the SAMHSA certified laboratories. Before we close out this video, let's cover some other FAQs that we get based upon this information. Here are some other frequently asked questions about drug testing cutoff levels. What about over-the-counter medications? Over-the-counter medications are ruled out during the confirmation testing process if they show up at all. What if a donor is abusing their prescription? Unfortunately, the cutoff levels do not tell us when the drug was used, how much of the drug was used, how strong the drug is, and also the levels do not tell us if a person took one hit of a joint or just one pill. However, it is likely that the detection window of one hit or one pill would be very short. Are quantitative levels provided on positive tests? Typically, no, they are not. The DOT prohibits providing quant levels on DOT required tests. A reported positive drug test is a positive, regardless of the levels it tested at. For non-DOT testing, there may be exceptions. Can different foods or products trigger a positive result? Yes, there's potential for this to happen during the screening phase, but these are ruled out in the confirmation testing process. Why is confirmation testing important? Confirmation testing provides for a legally defensible drug test result. One or more specific metabolites can be identified, quantified, and reported using the applicable confirmation cutoff level for a positive test result. This process guards against false positives, which is important for all parties involved. If you have questions about cutoff levels, screening or confirmatory testing phases, or another aspect of testing that we didn't cover in this video, you can always let us know by calling us directly at 866-843-4545 or by visiting our website at nationaldrugscreening.com. We have hundreds of articles featuring information about drug testing and all things related. Thanks for watching this video. We hope it was helpful to you in some way. Stay tuned for our upcoming videos 
or just visit our full YouTube channel at drugtestvideos.com and search for what you need help with. We have dozens upon dozens of videos waiting to assist you covering various topics in the world of drug testing. Until next time, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already.